All right, guys. So today I got another philosophical video for you. Sort of. It's somewhat philosophical, but it's also somewhat rooted in the realism of a post-collapse environment. When we talk about the post-collapse environment. We're talking about a theoretical scenario where, for whatever reason, the grid goes down, the power goes out for a prolonged period of time. The system collapses, there's nobody to enforce the rule of law, and it's basically every man for himself. What I want to talk about is the illusion of possession. Now, as preppers, most of us are of the persuasion that if we put aside provisions, that they're going to be ours after a crap hits the fan situation. Now, most of us, like myself, know that Possession is basically nine-tenths of the law. What that means is that essentially something is only yours if it's in your possession. So it means a lot of things, and we'll break down that quote later on in the video. Now what this boils down to is this. In the absence of protection from the bureaucracy, which is the police, you're not going to have anybody to essentially enforce the laws if somebody comes and steals your stuff or kills you and takes your stuff. Now, there's two ways to explore the issue of possession. One is from a legal standpoint, meaning that we have these social contracts that we enter. The more society evolves, the more and more social contracts there are, the more intricate and sophisticated these contracts we have with one another are. To such an extent that if you steal my private property, you know that there are potential legal consequences for doing so. Hence, you go to jail. There's also a philosophical thing here, and that's that you can't really, truly possess anything. And I don't mean this just in an abstract sense. Think about this for a second. Everything in your life, whether it's your house, your car, these things are all impermanent. These things are all transient possessions that you don't have, you hold. This is the key lesson I want people to learn here is that you don't have anything. You hold on to things. And because of the sophisticated social constructs that we've created as a civilization, some people have been permitted to hold on to a whole lot. All of those billionaires in their big mansions, you know, God bless their success. And I guess they're one part lucky. They're perhaps one part shrewd businessmen. A variety of things. I'm not talking about how they got there. But the fact is is that they hold quite a bit of stuff because society as a whole has agreed for them to have that stuff. Now, in a without rule of law situation, uh, a lot of those billionaires would not be able to hold on to that stuff unless they had private armies who they could persuade not to basically overtake them and take their stuff. This is perhaps why... People like Richard Branson have their own personal islands. This is perhaps why we learned that many billionaires have their own contingency plans for potentialities like World War III. These are very real things, and for them, it's not much to put aside a million or two dollars in order to create some bunker somewhere far away where no one is going to have access to it and where they might have provisions to see them through the deepest, darkest times of the post-apocalyptic world. But the fact is, anything external to your body, even the clothes that you're wearing, are not really yours. Well, there's this real illusion of possession in Western society. And it's this materialistic pursuit. It's worked itself out into a lot of mental health disorders. Hoarding is probably the most extreme form of this. But consumerism itself has created i think in a very background unconscious sort of way in a very non-direct sort of way it's created a lot of the problems a lot of the depression a lot of the mental health issues that we see manifesting in our society today now this isn't all wishy-washy all of the stuff that you have in your dwelling you think you own here's case in point the universe is trillions i think well billions of years old as far as we know there's a multiverse that means that there's infinite amounts of universes that we can't see then perhaps it's trillions of years old 
Your lifespan, in comparison to that, is so small. Everything that you own is transient. You don't own anything. The, the idea that you can own something is one of the most logical fallacies of mankind, perhaps. That we can actually own something. We can hold on to things. We can hold things near us within a domain that we can legally call our own. But we don't really own it. And see, the Native Americans, they innately perhaps knew this. Or perhaps it just wasn't in their nature to want to create a society built around private property. Now, I'm not knocking private property. I don't want to come off as some sort of rambling socialist or anything like that. But what I'm trying to say is that you need to understand the impermanence of possession. And why this is important in a practical sense is because in a crap hits the fan situation, a lot of people are going to think that the rules of the old game are still being played. And a lot of people are just going to presume that they have possession of something when the reality is if there's no social system, nothing technically is yours. Without any fear of repercussions and consequences, without a legal system, jails, police, yada yada yada, you only really own what you can defend. So when you see me reviewing all this really cool technology and gear on the channel, which I love, I think it's great that we continue to push the envelope with technologies that make our lives easier. It's not all about selling things for doom and gloom. It's about cool stuff that gets us excited. And that's okay. But I don't kid myself into thinking that just because, you know, I might own a homestead somewhere, which I don't, that somehow I'm going to go there when the crap hits the fan and I'm going to be able to just say, hey, this is mine, stay off my property. I think a lot of people haven't considered truly what a without rule of law situation is. There's no repercussions necessarily. Now, if there is an excessive rule of law situation, possession is indeed nine tenths of the law. Basically, what that quote means is that let's say you're out at a cabin somewhere and the grid has collapsed, okay? And uh, there's been, there's some order that remains. Maybe it's like an excessive rule of law scenario where th there's not enough resources to uh, police society in the way we do now, but there's still some small fractional government of sorts. If you are in a cabin which isn't yours, then it the burden of proof falls on the person who is not in that cabin at that point in time to prove that that is their cabin. The same thing holds true with the shirt you're wearing. The burden of proof falls on someone else to say that that's not yours. That's the whole idea behind possession is nine tenths of the law. So if you have no proof of ownership, which we've already said is illusory in the philosophical sense, but unfortunately here in this objective socially constructed reality that we've all agreed upon, it is very real and it has very real consequences on your lives, so we're going to roll with that. If you cannot prove to the powers that be at that time, hopefully they're semi-legitimate and acknowledge the pink slip in the first place and they're not some sort of post-apocalyptic warlord like a Negan type person who basically just extorts the hell out of your community and forces you to work for him, which could happen if the government collapsed entirely. In fact, it's not that it could happen, it's that it will happen. I've made several videos about why that will be the case. I guess the point I'm trying to make right now is that you can have all the preps you want right now. But if you don't have the means to defend yourself when the crap hits the fan, and I know there's a lot of fence sitters who are perhaps even anti-gun, or maybe not anti-gun, but just not as pro-gun as some of the more extreme pro-gun folks remember that the burden falls on you then not only to discern if it's a legitimate full-blown mad max without rule of law situation because remember that sort of hesitation is probably going to get a lot of people killed in that sort of scenario just thinking that oh i better not defend myself and i better abide by existing laws because when the system comes back i don't want to have the book thrown at me now, I'm not saying do anything against the law. I'm saying that the burden of making that decision falls on you. 
So you have to decide whether using lethal force to protect yourself. Now to Americans, this concept is foreign, but in Canada, we have laws that we have to deal with when we talk about protecting ourselves with lethal force. I'm not gonna get into the details. It's pretty silly. We can pretty much own almost every type of gun that Americans own. Unfortunately, we can't use them for anything other than hunting and target shooting. Pretty much for the most part, there are some loopholes in that which allow you to use it for self-defense if you feel that your life is threatened and if you can prove your life is threatened. So the burden then for the Canadian is twofold because we now have to use our judgment to discern whether our life is indeed threatened, whether there's going to be repercussions for doing this, and whether you can do it in the first place, whether you're capable, whether you have the training, whether you have the arsenal in order to protect what you hold because you have nothing. Possession is an illusion. You can only take to your grave your rotting carcass. That's it. You can't take anything to your grave but your memories, your experiences, your secrets.